What's up guys, it's James Allen, the Out of State Investor, and today I'm gonna to share with you in this video four reasons why you should not buy a house. I'm gonna share with you why you might have been sold a lie about the American dream, owning a house, and how it's been sold as a great investment for you to build your wealth on. I personally made the choice not to own a house in my market at the moment for a few reasons that I'll get into in just a moment. With that said, if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and smash that like button, and also push the subscribe button below to get updates of new videos like this when they get added to the channel. All right, let's get into it. Reason number one, opportunity cost. Now, depending on where you live, housing can be so expensive these days and mortgage rates have also began to climb as well. I live in Southern California, specifically LA County, where the median price for a home is over $600,000. This is insane. And of course, most people don't have over $600,000 in their bank accounts. So most of them end up financing their purchase with a FHA loan, which is a minimum 3.5% down payment or conventional financing, which you can get as low as 3%. So let's assume you're buying a $550,000 house for your family with an FHA loan. You will first have to use a lot of money out of pocket just to make the transaction in the first place. Now this includes your 3.5% down payment of $19,250, your closing costs which on this transaction could run you as large as $15,000 to $20,000. That is just the money that you are throwing away into thin air. And last your inspection which you don't have to do but I highly recommend getting an inspection whenever you buy real estate. All of this together, we're talking about almost $40,000 coming out of your pocket before you even walk through the door. Now when you consider the opportunity cost at a 10% return on investment, you could be reserving all of that capital and still make a return of $4,000 a year. But instead, what you're doing essentially when you purchase a house like this just to live in, first you're throwing away the first $15,000 to $20,000 on closing costs, and then you're setting aside the $19,250 down payment to become stuck in your house where you can't have any access to it or make any cash flow from it. So you have to ask yourself, are you willing to part with $40,000 right off the bat that you could have used to increase your income by $4,000 a year? Reason number two higher monthly payments. Again, depending on where you live, your monthly payments for buying versus renting can potentially be more expensive when you buy your house. A property at this $550,000 price point at let's say a 4.65% interest rate, which is currently the, the going rate, would be about $2,737 for your mortgage every month. But it doesn't stop there. We still have property taxes, which would roughly come out to about $582 a month. Homeowners insurance, which would be about another $101 a month. And then this little thing called MIP, also known as mortgage insurance premium. This is something that banks require you to have when you have less than 20% in the house that you own. In this case, the MIP would come out to about $335. Altogether, your monthly payment would be looking at about $3,754 and that is not even counting for the cost of any maintenance that comes up during your time of ownership. And trust me, it's gonna happen. Now, if I was to rent a similar house at the same neighborhood for this example, I could rent the same house in my area for about $2,500 a month, give or take. And you wouldn't be responsible for any maintenance needed on the house. That would save you over $1,250 of your money every single month, or about $15,000 a year. Now imagine what you could do with that kind of money. I mean, you could spend it on Gucci clothing, season tickets for your favorite NFL team, get that new car you had your eye on, or more what I'm gearing towards is you could really put your money to work and grow your money with a different investment path such as real estate, stocks, or mutual funds. You get the idea. Now if I use that same 10% return on investment opportunity costs, which I find relatively easy to do in real estate deals, then you could increase your income another $1,500 extra every year by simply investing that $15,000 instead. Now before long, this is gonna to start to snowball and you're gonna dramatically increase your income and net worth all while living in the same quality house. Now again, just to clarify, this is gonna be very specific to the market that you're in, but for areas similar to Southern California, New York, San Francisco, this is definitely a no-brainer. Now would you be willing to rent the same house versus owning it if it meant making an extra $15,000 a year? If so, type rent in the comments below. Number three, the equity myth. 
We get told this all the time that buying a house is the best investment you can make mainly because you can pay down a mortgage and build equity rather than paying someone else's mortgage and just renting. Now what people might not realize is that when you're dealing with a mortgage amortized over a period of 30 years, you'll find that you pay mostly interest first and won't pay much of the principal until later down the road. Now this can be really bad if you're planning on getting a starter home and you don't plan on living there longer than five years. Now if that sounds like you, that means that unless you gain a bunch of appreciation, you won't gain much equity at all. In fact, the calculations on this particular example, after five years of paying down the mortgage, you would have gained $47,804 in equity. Which actually sounds pretty good, right? But here's the thing, it's actually not as good as it sounds. You see, if your house hasn't gone up in value, your realtor fees alone are gonna cost you $33,000. Now you've already paid a down payment of $19,250 and an additional 15 to $20,000 when you purchase the property and closing costs. This puts your total at $48,000 to $53,000. And then there's still the extra closing costs on the sell side that you have to cover when you sell the property. And that's gonna be typically about 1% of the sale price. So for this example, that would be about another $5,500. So in other words, if you've gained $47,804 in equity, but you've paid $53,500 to $58,500 in transaction fees, then that means you're losing money. So now you're completely relying on appreciation to bail you out. This does not make you an investor, it makes you a speculator. And nobody knows what's gonna happen in the next five or 10 years from now. So for me, rather than bank on appreciation and just hope, I'd rather invest my money in places that I can better predict how I can not only make my money back, but increase my income, my purchasing power, and scale to keep growing my net worth. Reason number four, lack of flexibility. Now when I talk about lack of flexibility, I'm referring to flexibility in terms of being able to move whenever you want, as well as being financially flexible. So let me dig in a little deeper of what I mean. The minute you purchase a house you live in, you are now at the mercy of the housing market. If that market crashes or dips dramatically and you haven't built up much equity yet, you could find yourself stuck there until the market climbs up again. So if you got a new job offer in a different city or a state far away and wanted to move, you might be forced to stay in that house and give up that opportunity because you can't satisfy or pay off the loan on your house. Now financially, it can also restrict you. You see, many people that have an interest investing in real estate will tell me, James, first I wanna buy a house for myself to live in and then I'll invest. You see, the problem with that is that if you're purchasing a house that has huge monthly payments and you aren't making a lot of money yourself, it will affect your DTI or also known as debt to income ratio, which is what mortgage lenders use to determine if you are able to afford a loan on an investment property. Now when it comes to purchasing an investment property, you won't qualify for a conventional loan if your monthly debt versus your monthly income is higher than 45 to 50%. So for example, if your household income is $8,000 a month and you're paying $3,700 a month on your house and $600 a month on your cars, then you won't be able to qualify for a mortgage to invest in real estate. Whereas if you would have rented the same house at $2,500 a month and still had your $600 a month in car payments, now all of a sudden you would have the opportunity to qualify for that. So obviously there is a lot more that goes into qualifying a borrower than just debt to income, but hopefully this explains how you could potentially be restricting your future opportunities and investments simply by purchasing your house. Now I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is just my personal beliefs when it comes to buying a house or personal residence in one of these kind of markets. As always guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. And if you have any thoughts or feedback about the video, I'd love to hear from you guys. Please comment down below. I always love hearing what you guys have to say. Now lastly, check out my Instagram page if you wanna see what's going on with me daily, at The Out of State Investor. Thanks again for watching guys, and I'll see you on the next one.